Well, good morning. Uh, I'm hoping that the internet is correct today. We've been battling with the internet a bit. I'm just trying to see if this is focusing. Oh, there we go. So we're back online and we hope we can stay online for a while. Sorry about the, the disruption yesterday in service. I actually wanted to continue, uh, but I, it, it is as if I think the enemy is trying to stop this one with all that's within him. Even this morning as I was writing, I could just sense that God is trying to say something to his people. I mean, finding God uh, is, I believe, finding the fullness of God. And that means finding everything that's available for us as believers. And healing is one of those things that is um, in the church uh, widely disputed. Uh, uh, there are the, the, Most people believe uh, in Jesus' ministry. Most people believe that there were signs, miracles and wonders. But there's a segment of the church that believes that um, those signs, miracles and wonders cease to exist uh, as the apostolic era, what is referred to commonly as the apostolic era, ceased. They believe that. So um, they obviously are beautiful children of God and, and we love them. But the fact of the matter is they will never experience uh, God's uh, full uh, covenant blessing in the area of health. Uh, and um, we get challenged in those areas as we get older, uh, but uh, death is working in our body. So, so we, we discover that we get older and we have challenges and challenges and stuff like that. But I think um, in general, what, uh, what I discovered uh, in finding God was that I actually had to push through. And that's what I spoke yesterday about. I spoke about my mind and the healing of my mind. And then I was telling you about this experience I had with my hip socket where um, I went for all these physio sessions, I went for everything, and I got to a point where I had to make a decision. And, and what I write in the book was, I say, man, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with medical science. I'm actually saying God uses that a lot. Of times God uses medical science. But what I'm saying is you might get to a point, a crossroad in your life where you have to actually make a decision. And there's a little key here uh, um, that I, uh, I talk about, which I probably will take a bit of flack once the book is released is the difference, uh, or one of the, the differences as I see it, I'm not uh, presenting it as a theological argument, I'm just saying is this is what I discovered, between Pentecostals and Charismatics, uh, and um, you know, for, for some of the readers it, readers it might be interesting, but years ago I was following a guy's ministry, he was a great Pentecostal teacher, and uh, he actually had a miraculous ministry, I mean the TV cameras were following this guy around, because of his ministry of signs, miracles, and wonders. But what happened is this guy actually died of, uh, of some disease. And for me, it was a shock, you know, because I thought, how could thousands of people claim to be healed in this guy's ministry? And then this guy goes and he dies. Uh, he dies at, a, at, a, at a, a, what I believe, premature time. And also he dies, uh, you know, from an illness or from a debilitating illness. And, and I didn't understand that. But then... As I was searching the scriptures and I was looking and I was just listening to various of the Pentecostals and Charismatics uh, speak, I found there was a cardinal difference. The one is that um, the, uh, the Pentecostals, and again, I'm generalizing because it's not all of them, but uh, a lot of them, and, and I'm saying that might even have changed by now. I'm not sure. I, I, I didn't do investigation of this, but a lot of them believe that healing is part of Certainly this guy believed that healing is part of the, uh, of the preaching of the gospel, the manifestation of the preaching of the gospel. In other words, signs, miracles and wonders were given to demonstrate the power of the gospel. Uh, it's sort of like the, the unseen world breaking into the seen world. And, um, that, uh, and then that is what it is for. Uh, but the problem with that is that when you then get sick or when, when you get bad news and, and the doctor says you have cancer or you have some kind of a disease, what grounds do you have to stand uh, on for your healing? I mean, you can pray and you can ask God and you can say to God, demonstrate your power, demonstrate your, your, uh, your, 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 your gospel. But the fact is it's still up to God then if you're going to be sick or healed. And that is where the fundamental, for me, it's a subtle little fundamental difference where a lot of the charismatic people see healing as part of the atonement. In other words, what they say is, as Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price for sin and his blood was shed as that atonement sacrifice, uh, he also paid the price for disease and sickness. Which then means that as you are trusting God for, for your 
uh, forgiveness and, and you're receiving the grace and you're saying, thank you, God, that you forgive me. You, you, in the same sense, you, you can then, um, I, don't, I want to use the word demand, uh, demand physical health in your body. The reason I use that word demand is because in my story, it was evident that the enemy does not want us to be well. Uh, as much as, as, as Jesus came into the world and he demonstrated that uh, he wanted everybody well. Nobody was healed. Nobody was sick that was, wasn't healed. And nobody asked for healing that didn't receive it. So Jesus demonstrates sort of the will of God. Um, and and, he, and he's a, the Bible says he's the, the image of, of the invisible God. So we see that in Jesus' ministry. And as much as Jesus wanted, like John 10.10 10 says, to give us this abundant life, the enemy, on the other hand, in the same scripture, John 10.10, 10, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So on the one side, you've got the forces of darkness trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And on the other side, you've got uh, God's provision for His church, for His, for His people. And discovering God, I believe, in the Christian life is, is walking into that provision. Now, this incident that, that happened um, uh, with me was a difficult one because, like I said, for many years I was in the church and I was, uh, I say in my book as well, I was in a charismatic church. I heard everybody talk about healing. I believed in healing, but yet in my physical body I had this problem. I firstly saw it as something that, that had happened, the accident, uh, and then after a while, I actually that night I went running, uh, the hip got sore, uh, I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand. Uh, I, I saw it as an accident, but as it progressed, I thought, okay, maybe go to the doctor, it will be sorted out, went to the doctor, and then for, for, for hundreds and thousands of visits to doctors, physios, chiropractors, I discovered that this was potentially a long-term problem, and um, I think it was about the age of 28, I was sitting in the, in the, in the chiropractor's office, and he had uh, this big uh, um, loom box with my x-rays, he showed me, and then he said, there, there's, your de there's your deficiency, there's your defect in your hip, there's the socket, it's too shallow, uh, and uh, you will need a replacement, and, and I remember he said to me, that even before you are 30 years old, you will not be able to walk uh, with this problem. He, he still demonstrated the mobility of my leg to me. He moved it. He showed me, okay, can you see this is, this is what it's causing? That's the limitation. And after suffering with pain for so many years and going to all the chiros, going to all the physios, getting the shock treatment, the, the massage treatment, you know, the, the, the different ointments, then the drugs and the, and the injections and everything. I was at, a, at, at my wit's end and, and I just felt tired, you know. I, I had seen people go through hip replacements uh, and, and for me, uh, you know, I, back then it, it happened, I think every 10 to 8 years you had to go. I was just thinking, I'm suffering a decision. I had to make a decision. Was I going to um, trust God or was I going to go the medical route? And again, I'm saying nothing wrong with going the medical route, but in, at that stage, I got learned a big lesson. I, I went back to the scripture, I searched the scriptures, I looked to see what the scriptures said, because I think the years of suffering with what had now become a chronic condition uh, got me to a point where I didn't really have the faith to believe, I didn't really have the, the strength to, to actually believe, so I had to go back to the scriptures to stir myself up in my most holy faith, and then I got to a point where I had to make a, 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 a decision, what was I going to do? And um, I've got these few points that I write in the book. This is not a, um, a theological book about healing, but under God's provision, you know, I had to also extensively talk about this because I believe it's a, it's a real need in people's lives. I mean, I've seen in the church for 29 years, many people are sick and many people suffer with illness, seasons and attacks of sickness. And I, I think we need to know how to respond. Uh, it's not a, um, a detrimental if, 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 if you don't receive your healing in the sense where you, you, you're now a bad Christian or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I am trying to, to say what I discovered when I discovered as I was finding God in, in that area of my life. And then I'm just saying that if you are stuck and sitting in a situation 
then you might get to the valley of decision like I got to it, um, that crossroad where I had to make a choice. Was I going to go for the op? I mean, to take a pill every day is not a problem. To, to take an injection, to do this, to do that, it's not a problem. But when they talk about taking your body apart, um, you know, and, and I've seen sort of on, on the TV shows how this looks, that, that's quite a problem for me. So um, these are the points that came up as I did my study. Number one, and like I say, you can go search the scriptures. This is not a, a script. The book is not just geared on, on sort of trying to push theological positions. It's about my journey finding God. Sickness is death working in the body. So God didn't create sickness. We don't see it in the garden. Uh, we see God's uh, creation was good. It was very good. It was perfect. And we see sin entering and sickness entered in by sin. And it's actually death working in the body. It's a form of death working in the body. So we can identify that as an enemy of, of God's blessing and of God's creation. Um, what Another thing I picked up was you don't read of the pilgrims, Abram, Isaac, Jacob, suffering of illness. You don't read that it was a, that it was a thing in their lives. Uh, and you also read of, of many of the kings actually being healed by God. After uh, um, this, you, you, um, okay, you, you hear of also, after the pilgrims, after this, you hear of God's uh, promising uh, healing to the nation of Israel. So the descendants of Jacob get into a position where they have this covenant, where none of these diseases will come upon them, and they walk in divine health. As they keep the covenant, they walk in divine health. Now, um, I can't get into this, but the new covenant we have is a better covenant with better promises. I can scripturally uh, prove that to you. There are scriptures for it. Um, and not the scope of this discussion, but believe me, it's a better covenant with better promises. So then, in other words, divine health becomes amplified um, through, the, through the cross. And we need to understand that. So we should have better promises. We have better promises. They should manifest in our lives. If Israel was blessed um, financially, we should be blessed financially. If, if Israel uh, walked in divine health in the desert and their, their, their shoes didn't even wear on their feet, we should have those same things. So whatever you take through the cross is amplified and we should have actually more. Then Jesus uh, could have come preaching. He could have come doing a lot of things, but he healed people. Why? Because he came to deliver them. And there's a, there's a very uh, critical scripture in Acts 10.38 that it's difficult to get past this. Um, and that it's how God had anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how he went about doing good, healing all who were under the power of the devil. Okay, so healing all, number one, who were under the power of who? The devil. So that is sort of for us a challenge to say, okay, when we, when we uh, see sickness come on our body, when we see debilitating disease attack us, um, what would Jesus have done in that circumstance? And then the final point is um, Matthew 7, 11 says, he's a better father than we are. So I'm asking in the, in the, in the sense of discovering God, God's will in terms of healing and health, if God is a better father, what would God want for you? And it's, it's to actually then get that revelation where you say, but yes, I know God would want me well because I would want my children well. So why am I not well? And then you can look at various reasons and you can try and uh, uh, decide it. But a lot of times you won't be able to actually figure out what's going on. A lot of times there will be no answer. Like with my hip problem, there was no answer. But I got to that crossroad, as I said, and I had to make the decision. So what was different this time uh, was I asked the congregation to pray for me. But I made a decision beforehand that I was not going to look at, uh, at the manifestation in my body. So in other words, I wasn't going to let them pray and then try the hip and see if it was better. Because that is the mistake I think most of us make. We expect that if it worked, if the prayer worked, we say that if word, if the prayer worked, we would see the result in our body. And unfortunately, it's not always like that because there's a time delay. And this is exactly what God taught me during this process of discovering God. And this works not just for healing, it works for finances, it works for, for marriage problems, it works for children that are addicted to drugs, it it works. There, there is seed time and harvest a lot of time. And that time session is as we have to stand. And 
The problem that I had in the past was I would pray, or I have people pray with me, and then I would test it and it wouldn't be fixed. So I would then confess that it wasn't right. But this time I now had the information from the doctor that he said, look, it's going to happen. You are, you are in a position where you will have to replace that hip, else you will not be able to walk. I couldn't stand in the church playing music. I was sitting. So I went to the congregation uh, and, and then I, 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 I made a decision just based on my discovery of scripture that I would not speak of it again and I would just receive it. So it, not looking to the manifestation of healing, but looking to the promise. I am the God that healed you by my stripes. Uh, you are healed or you were healed looking at the promise and then receiving that and then not saying anything else. And um, that was one of the biggest lessons of my life. If you talk about um, finding God and discovering God, even as a Christian, that was a great lesson because it taught me one thing, that if I have a revelation of God, if I have a promise of God, and I have to stand on that word, the enemy will not always... Let it go quickly. Uh, and I said yesterday, there was a period when Daniel prayed, the angel was there. The other time that, uh, Daniel prayed, the angel took 21 days. The angel said to Daniel, there was warfare involved and I couldn't get you quick enough. So the, 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 the manifestation is not always instant. And it's there where, where our faith is sort of tested. And, and a lot of times our faith fails when we don't see the results straight away. It's like that in every area of prayer, in every area of petition, in every area that we stand as Christians, we lose those promises because we go in with the initial idea of testing it to see if it's going to work. Not with faith, because faith, uh, faith believe, believes that it already has worked. <laughs> it's, it, man, I'm going to boggle your brain with that. But faith believes that it already has worked. So when those guys prayed for me and I said, thank you, Lord, I take my healing according to the atonement uh, sacrifice, according to the price you paid on Calvary, I know this is part of the atonement. I know this is my inheritance as a saint, as I believe that I'm born again, so I believe that I'm healed. I am taking it now in Jesus' name. When I got up there, the hip was still sore. The next morning, the hip was even sore. And, and uh, I remember Ingela asking me, uh, how, how are you feeling? You know, and I just said, it's, it's fine. No problem. I wasn't lying. I was saying in the spirit, I know according to the promise that it's done. It was done. It was actually done on Calvary. It's difficult to get your brain around that. But then I had to stand for two weeks. It was worse. And then all of a sudden after, I would say about a month or something, I, I can't even remember how long, I just noticed that I was perfect. And since that day, I've been perfect. I've never had the operation and I, and I believe that God touched me. And that taught me that many things in our lives will not just come uh, easily. It, w it won't just fall upon us. We will have to stand on God's word and sometimes... When we, and actually most of the time, when we enter into that warfare, when we, when we go to a point where we say, we are now going to trust God. Man, finding God, I discovered so many things of God the last 29 years. Um, things that I could have solved in my life 10 years ago. It took me 10 years to discover. It took me five years to discover. Because the provision that God has provided for us is so perfect it's it's so full but we only tap into it as we get that revelation and then we enter into the spiritual dimension and we start accessing what god actually has for us and uh, then then we like you know we're shocked because we say it's like walking through a curtain where where you know where, where your eyes just open up and you say man you know what i should have seen this a long time ago and my entire life would have been different. And um, what I also mention in the in the book is that going through this process actually uh, enabled me. It it, it, it it provides enablement as you 
fighting the fight of faith and you have certain victories, you learn certain lessons. It's stuff, it's like the school of faith where people can't take that away from you. And years later, when, when, when my, doctor, um, my doctor was convinced that I had cancer, you know, I, the, the word cancer, when, when you hear the word cancer, a lot of people just go into fear. But because of this battle I fought early on in my, in my Christian walk, it actually didn't scare me. And I could just, I could just uh, um, take it in faith. And I can remember the doctor probably asking me 10 times, you know, the same thing over and over again. And I was just confessing faith. And um, it wouldn't have been like that if I didn't go through this. So yes, you know, it's not God's will for us to go through difficulty. But we are living in a, in a world that is fallen. And uh, we are living in a world where, where sin has entered in. And through sin, death entered in. And through death and sin we have disease and we have sickness. We have natural wear and tear, which we see in, 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 in nature. You know, I mean, we look at our house, it needs a coat of paint. We see that and we, we must just draw the lines in our lives and make decisions. As we find God, as God's revelation becomes clearer to us, we need to then make decisions. How are we going to live this life? We can live it by faith, proclaim that faith, Fill ourselves with that promises, with those promises, and then have those promises activated in our lives. Or we can live a limited Christian life where we are actually just a victim of circumstances and of situations. And that is, the, that is a, a small difference, but it's a big difference in, in terms of the outcome. God doesn't love us less. God doesn't keep, he, he doesn't keep heaven away from us. He, he doesn't hate us or anything like that. No, no, no. This is all about how we live here. It is all about how we can be victorious here and how we can overcome here. And that is sort of one of the aspects that I wanted to really stress out. Um, and this has been a, the longest uh, chapter in the book. It might not be in the book in the sense where I might take some of it out and, and actually uh, and put it in a different book <laughs> because um, uh, this finding God is, 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 is aimed at, at uh, unbelievers maybe or can I say people that, that have not found God yet. Um, uh, so it's aimed at them. But I will put the testimony in here. But the theological discussions and the discussions that I'm having with you today might not be in this section of the book. But it talks about provision. And this episode 10 you know, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, was talking about provision, about what has God provided for you? What is yours? What is yours? Not what's going to be yours, not uh, what might be yours. No, knowing what is your inheritance in terms of every aspect of your life and then stepping into that and pushing into that and then pursuing that and then taking that uh, for your life, just taking it, uh, grabbing it. Um, John 10.10, 10, the, 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 the word used there, abundance, is parisos. It's overflowing, it's abundant. We can see in creation, even the created world, we can see God's abundant mentality, uh, the universe, the vastness of the universe, the, 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 just the, the magnitude of everything and the complexity and the greatness of what God created. And then we can ask ourselves, what does God want for us? Uh, what does he want for us? And why are we probably in many cases and in many areas experiencing the opposite in our lives? Yes, we will have challenges. Yes, we will have storms. Yes, we will have difficulties. But through all these things, we are supposed to come out more than conquerors. But religion and, and I would say a lot of incorrect information is keeping the church out of the power areas of the gospel. And that is probably what, what finding God is, is also about in a, in a great sense. It's, it's when, we, when we see the provision of God, when we step into that provision, we can start stepping into those power areas of God. And then we can see true and lasting change in the natural world around us. Not just heaven, not just one day when we get to heaven, everything's going to be okay. Yes, it's going to be wonderful. But if, 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 if we hear the word says that we have weapons uh, uh, of our warfare, if we hear that, that we are powerful and, and that uh, He's given us the authority, if we hear those things, then all those aspects of 
what it says is actually for here and now, for our life right here and right now, because that is where we're going to need it. We don't need this in heaven. When we all get to heaven, it's going to be perfect. You're not going to need uh, the uh, power, the authority. You're not going to need the promises there because everything is provided. Everything is perfect. What you need now on earth today, as we are talking on earth today, what you need now is to be able to step into those power areas of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And I hope this has been informative and I'm so happy that the internet for today stayed on and I was able to share this and God bless you and I pray for you that God will take you from glory to glory and that you will step into those power areas and experience the abundant life that Jesus came and that Jesus died for you. That abundant life that was provided by His atonement sacrifice. The price has been paid and you can step into the power areas of the Spirit in Jesus' name. God bless.